Sarah, you know that we read about the Man of Olives over and over in Scripture, and wonderful things and terrible things have happened here. This is where, when Absalom decided to try to take over the kingdom, kill his own father, King David, David had to flee. And he had to flee across that Kidron Valley we're looking at. He came up this way towards the desert to our east. And it really is a desert to the east. But let me just read. This is 2 Samuel 15. The whole countryside wept aloud as all the people passed by. So many people went with King David. The king also crossed the Kidron Valley and all the people moved on toward the desert. But David continued up the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went. His head was covered, and he was barefoot. All the people with him covered their heads too, and were weeping as they went up. So Absalom had won the hearts of the people, but not all the people. There are many people who still loyal to David and love David, and they decided to leave their homes, leave their city, Many would have assumed that would be the last time they ever would enter the walls of Jerusalem. They went with David and they traveled across that Kidron Valley and up the Mount of Olives to the east, to the desert. And of course, one famous passage that so many know, but it needs to be carefully studied, is from Ezekiel. It's his vision. It's Ezekiel 10. Let me just read a little bit of that. The glory of the Lord went up from within the city and stopped above the mountain east of it. That's the Mount of Olives. And of course you know that the city was besieged over and over and over. Syria and Israel came and besieged Jerusalem. That's about 742 B.C. You know, we have the kicked, wicked king Ahaz read about it in 2nd Kings. They have sent messengers to say to Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, I am your servant and vassal. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Aram and the king of Israel who are attacking me. And so they were sending messengers, messages to a foreign nation, the nation that finally conquered all of Israel and then Judah. And then, of course, and then in 2 Kings 24, we read this. This relates to Babylon. Surely these things happened to Judah according to the Lord's command in order to remove them from his presence because of the sins of Manasseh and all he had done, including the shedding of innocent blood, for he had filled Jerusalem with blood. And 2 Kings 24, some more. Zedekiah was 21 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, just as Jehoiakim had done. It was because of the Lord's anger that all this happened to Jerusalem and Judah. And in the end, he thrust them from his presence. I think it's significant that we want to say that the Lord would never, never choose to walk away from his people. Well, look at the seven churches of Asia. And the Lord said to them, repent. Or I'll have to remove your candlestick. And of course, there's not a church one that remains of those seven. They all died in time. Try again. So in the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, marched against Jerusalem with his whole army. He encamped outside the city and built siege works all around it. The city was kept under siege until the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. By the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine in the city had become so severe that there was no food for the people to eat. Then the city wall was broken through, and the whole army fled at night through the gate between the two walls near the king's garden. That's the south end of the city. Though the Babylonians were surrounding the city, they fled toward the Arabah. But the Babylonian army pursued the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho. And then what happens? I won't read all this, but just remember how Zedekiah's sons were killed before his eyes. And then they put out his eyes. So the last thing he saw were his sons being put to death. And then they put him in bronze shackles and took him to Babylon. Wow. And then, of course, the Romans came. And we have a lot of description from Josephus. As the Roman legions gathered for the siege of Jerusalem in 8070, the 10th legion came 
up on the east side of the Mount of Olives and camped. Titus was here, the Roman legions were here, and of course, in time, they did conquer the city. And then, of course, we have Jesus, who had taught his disciples and said, you see these stones? They were so impressed. Those Herodian stones were so large, so massive. And he says, do you see all these things? Let me tell you that not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. And that's exactly what happened. And then we read after he had shared that, he went up on the Mount of Olives. Jesus made that same walk, I have no doubt, many times. Get away from the people, go into the Garden of Gethsemane or go to another place where he's not surrounded by the crowds. And as he had done that, his disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And of course, then we have all of Matthew 24, which is kind of a double prophecy. It is about the destruction of Jerusalem. And that happened. There's not one stone left of that temple that's on another stone of that temple. And there's a reason why. Titus said, don't let that temple be burned. And then a soldier threw a torch. It caught on fire. It was covered with gold. The gold seat between the stones. And so the soldiers were determined to get to the gold. So they broke every stone apart. They wanted to get between the stones that gold that had melted, that had fallen between the stones. And so every stone was separated from every other stone. The soldiers got the gold out and the words of Jesus were fulfilled. But there are also words about the end of time. There will be destruction and then the Lord comes. It's going to be a time of persecution and then the Lord comes.